I heard him speak 10 years ago, I think, at least, at, um, at our UGA campus here in Tifton, and he is a professor down at Valdosta State, and many of you that are here today have said, oh, we've gone on walks with him, and he's wonderful, and he's identified these plants for us. So he's here with us today. He's brought a whole group of his, um, they told me they were the honor students over there. <laughs> So the honor students are here with us today, and um, we'll just turn things over to Dr. Carter, and they will be having a hands-on portion when he, at the conclusion or as he works into the end of this with these young folks and those plants against the wall there. So Dr. Richard Carter. So if you start seeing a cardboard box coming around and you put your name tag in it, we're going to draw for some beautiful books and other things that I have in this box up here. Well, it's great to be here. Um, when Amy asked me to do this, I wasn't quite sure what she wanted to talk about. And of course, I gravitated, you you I gravitated toward the herbarium. Is that better? And if I drift off, just let me know. <laughs> I'm used to using one of these. Um, and I, she was very kind. I don't think the herbarium talk is really what they were interested in, uh, or maybe what you were interested in. So uh, she very graciously agreed to let me start out with my spiel on the herbarium in Valdosta State. And then we will, I will do a little talk on, maybe a longer talk, on the basics of plant identification, which is really impossible to do in such a short period of time. Uh, I'll say more about that when we address. What is herbarium? I talked to people, I talked to a couple, several people here today, and uh, already uh, it was obvious that uh, one or two people really didn't know what herbarium was. They think this is maybe a, a garden, but with herbs growing, or something like that. And it, it's reasonable to assume that. But it's anything but that. It's, it's, it's one of my friends in Valdosta uh, said years ago, I'll never forget it, he referred to it, and probably still does, as the plant board. <laughs> Herbarium is a collection of dried plant specimens. It's a repository of the physical specimens as well as the data on their labels. Uh, a lot of people see an herbarium as merely a room in a building, and in the academic setting, I have colleagues who see, you, you bet, who see that as merely a room in a building, and it's a room that maybe they walked. <laughs> but it's, it's more than that. So that's like equating uh, wine with its bottle. Uh, just as a library is a collection of books comprising of Tremendous body of knowledge and herbarium is a collection of Tauscher specimens, we call them, comprising vast information about plants. And uh, here in this slide, I have a photograph of a very pretty, even in its pressed flattened state, a very pretty invention. Sebation, invention may see. Herbarium specimens are permanent vouchers supporting a variety of scientific research, including floristic, taxonomic, ecological, agricultural, physiological, and genetic work. The voucher specimen on the left is a permanent record providing tangible evidence of the occurrence of Gentiani Catesbii at the Way Track, an old growth lonely pine wiregrass forest in Thomas County, near Thomasville. Uh, these voucher specimens enable repeatability, so essential in scientific research, by permanently providing preserved, tangible evidence of the identity of the organisms that are the subjects of the search. And they are not necessarily all identified correctly. We think we like to think they are, but they're not. Um, but the fact that they are there permanently uh, provides an opportunity for someone to come in and correct misidentified specimens, to annotate them correctly. So that's something we do with these voucher specimens. 
We uh, update the nomenclature. We correct misidentified specimens. And we keep a record of what they were identified as originally. Uh, some people, I've talked to people, you don't, you don't get rid of that earlier determination. No, that's part of the historical record. It goes with that specimen. The herbarium provides reference material essential for identifying unknown plants and consistently applying the names of plants. Uh, a critical examination of the specimens, uh, images that I show here, would reveal that even though they look uh, different in many respects, one from the other, critical examination shows that they are all of the same species. A sedge species, Cyperus crocius. Type specimens are a special category of herbarium specimens of preserved herbarium. They're standards that fix the application of names by enabling the association of a name, a scientific name, with a physical specimen. Without the type specimen, what would you have? You would have a description, and believe me, even a technical description is, is not the same thing as a physical uh, example of the actual specimen. Uh, there's no substitute for that really at this point. The existence of this type specimen on the left, permanently preserved in the Linnaean herbarium in London, enables us to know precisely what Linnaeus meant when he named and described Scirpus retrofractus in 1753, and enabling us to apply the name consistently to other plants of this species. So these are absolutely essential standards. Uh, supporting the scientific nomenclature, botanical nomenclature. And on the right, this is a, a type specimen located in the herbarium at Valdosta State of a larkspur, Delphinium alabama, designated by Robert Crawl, my graduate mentor, when he named and described this species in 1976. So we do have, I think uh, currently we estimate, or, yeah, we count, about 60 type specimens various types of herbarium Valdosta. The old herbarium, like the gray herbarium at Harvard, I think they've got 17, 18,000 times. <laughs> Physical specimens on herbarium sheets are critically evaluated and measured, and the data derived from them analyzed and compiled into technical descriptions, keys, diagnostic keys for identifying unknown and illustrations essential for accurate identification of plants. Label data provide essential information on habitat, location, date of collection, and other attributes of the plant. And I should remark that uh, specimens without label data, adequate label data, are of very little scientific use. We might be able to use them in teaching as an example of, uh, of a species or a plant group. But beyond that, there's really no value. So that label data is absolutely essential. Locality data on voucher specimen labels are the basis for mapping species occurrences to determine range and distribution and related trends. So this, we use them to map, map the, uh, the uh, species. Through GIS technology, uh, geographical information system technology, precisely mapped locality data can be associated with various kinds of ecological data. For example, data on soils or climate to increase our understanding of the factors limiting distributions of plants. And we also use them as teaching to show examples uh, in teaching to show examples of different kinds of plants and their characteristics. So, why are herbaria important? If accuracy and consistency <coughs> are uh, important in the identification and naming of plants, then the herbaria is essential. Most people, many professional biologists included, do not understand the connection between the herbarium and accurate and consistent identification and naming of plants, probably because they've never thought about it. After all, popular guides and floristic manuals were used to identify and name plants, not herbarium specimens. 
ballistic manuals are based on axiomatic treatments. We refer to this as the primary literature. And voucher specimens in preparing. And popular guides are based generally on floristic manuals. Voucher specimens in herbaria are the primary source materials for taxonomic treatments. Botanical names are based on particular kinds of voucher specimens called type specimens, as we've seen previously. Type specimens, again, are standards preserved in herbaria that enable the accurate and consistent application of plant names. What do we do when there is a problem putting the right name on a plant? Well, we generally seek the assistance of an expert. And some define expert as someone who knows more about something than we do. <laughs> if the expert fails, then a higher level of expertise is sought. Eventually, if there's a question about the identity or name of a plant that can't be resolved using a floristic manual, then the primary literature is consulted. If a review of the primary literature fails, then voucher specimens in herbarium are consulted. The world's network of herbarium, comprising many millions of specimens, are the foundation of any scientific endeavor that requires accurate and consistent identification and naming of plants. And this is a diagram that I put together, and it, it sort of relates what I've just talked about uh, to voucher specimens. And it's, it's modeled after uh, the ecological pyramid. So at the base of the pyramid, we have the herbarium voucher specimens. Above that, the primary literature is based upon an examination, a critical examination of those voucher specimens. Secondary manuals oftentimes based upon primary literature. And the tertiary guides, the general uh, guides for laymen, for the most part, uh, with little, if any, link to herbarium vouchers. A lot of us don't make that connection, but there is a connection. Um, I am passionate about the herbarium. We've got a fine herbarium in Valdosta State. About 75,000 specimens exceeded only by the herbarium in the University of Georgia in the state of Georgia. Um, and uh, I'm 64 years old. I'm not going to be working forever. So I'm at the point in my career when I'm thinking in terms of who will follow. Very important to get someone, not who does exactly what I do, but someone who uses the herbarium in some way and will uh, ensure that the herbarium in Valdosta State is continued. A little bit about the history of our herbarium. It began as a teaching collection. Uh, Dr. Beatrice Nettens joins the faculty of what is now Valdosta State in 1937. She accumulated a teaching collection of about a thousand specimens. Dr. Wayne Faircloth, my predecessor and former department head at Valdosta State, he's the man who took a chance and hired me, joined the faculty in 1961. And by 1967, Dr. Faircloth had increased the depth and stature of the herbarium sufficiently to be recognized in the world's uh, compendium of herbaria, Index Herbariorum. And it shows a timeline. I won't uh, get into this much at all, but it shows the uh, progression of Valdosta State University, <coughs> below in blue and above in green, in the, uh, in the herbarium, its history at Valdosta State. We often miss opportunity because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. <laughs> I like the Ozark version of that. It ain't often that opportunity is recognized. It generally looks like work. <laughs> but uh, I was very lucky to get a job at Valdosta State at Nervarium that I stepped into, and I did my best to continue and to expand it. Uh, this shows the growth of the Valdosta State University of Herbarium since 1970. You can see that we've steadily increased the size of the Herbarium. It's a regional collection of nearly 75,000 specimens, and I'm biased, but I think the quality is excellent. 
the number of accession specimens has increased more than twofold since I was hired in 1984. Uh, our herbarium is particularly rich in plants of the Georgia coastal plain. We have extensive collections of brownoids, these are grasses and grass like plants, ferns, and bryophytes. And I list some of these significant collectors on the <coughs> In 2011, we received funding from the, from the National Science Foundation, along with the University of Georgia Herbarium, uh, basically to enhance the Valdosta State Herbarium. They were doing other things in Georgia. It was a collaborative. They had their thing to do, and we had ours, two separate but linked grants. We got funding to add cabinets and to process backlog specimens and to digitize the collection. Mostly what they did in Georgia was to digitize their holdings. And I'll talk a bit about digitization. So through this project, we imaged more than uh, 70, 000, nearly 71,000 specimens. We took high resolution images of those specimens. And you can see the student uh, seated at the imaging station. This student alone imaged, I think, about 55,000 specimens. And he was very efficient, very fast. Once I saw how well he worked, uh, that, that's what he did. <laughs> Didn't make me mistakes. And of course, we also built uh, a database linked by barcode labels to those image specimens. We added 20 cabinets. And this is what the herbarium looked like uh, at the end of that project. We also processed backlog specimens of nearly more than 9,000 and exchanged more than 8,000 specimens with other herbaria. And we, um, we gathered an associated geo-reference data, we call it. These are precise latitude, longitude coordinates with nearly 4,000 specimen records through that project. And this is one of the students who was instrumental in working with the, uh, ge the georeferencing aspect. We developed and made our protocols uh, available to the community at large. And we had a lot of educational outreach. Uh, through this grant, Valdosta State, uh, we trained 15 undergraduate students in her very inspiration. It was very rewarding for me. Came at a good time in my career. And here's some of the students. And they look mostly pretty happy. <laughs> and we collaborated with the library of Valdosta State to uh, serve our images and data online. They're publicly accessible through what we call the Valdosta State Virtual Herbarium. So you can go and check and see what we've got and look at high resolution images of the specimens of the collection. More well, recently, I, I wrote another. Uh, NSF proposal. This was a solo effort. Advances in Wiregrass, Georgia. Infrastructure improvements to sustain another half century of herbarium based research and teaching. And we received about $176,000 uh, for, for this project. Major goals were installation of a high density storage system. We basically filled up the space that was allocated for the herbarium. We were having growing pains. Process additional backlog specimens, georeference additional uh, localities, and to acquire the Vanderbilt University Botanical Teaching Collection that had lain dormant for more than 15 years in boxes. And it was extensive. And outreach again. So in uh, August of 2015, the compactor system was installed. Uh, and this is what the herbarium looks like presently. Through the installation of this compactor system, 41 new cabinets uh, were added, increasing the specimen storage capacity by 35%. And we process, we are processing backlog specimens, georeferencing. And we have uh, accepted 136 boxes of Norman <laughs> Vanderbilt University teaching specimens. We are in the process of putting those into service. They use them 
last semester my dendrology course and have used them to some extent this semester in my local horror course. And outreach. So that's my spiel on the herbarium. We, we do offer tours. If you've got garden uh, club groups, uh, we, we do those. Just get in touch and we're happy to do it. Very proud of it. Maybe excessive so. I think this is what I was invited to do. <laughs> the basics of plant identification. Um, I told Amy this, this was really an impossible task to, to teach um, the basics of plant identification in an hour, a bit more than an hour. But I said I'd give it my best attempt. I tried one of these in Americas a number of years ago, and I, I learned a lot from that experience. So I kind of altered my approach a bit. So I'm going to, I'll follow 